It's a good job you're not thin-skinned. <laughs> Don't you believe it? Underneath that mild exterior that beats a heart of un unalloyed <laughs> timidity, doesn't that, darling? <laughs> Making out my rope isn't sensitive. How could you? Oh, oh, have a drink. He just knows which side his bread is buttered and by whom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. What are we celebrating? <laughs> I got another ticket today. <laughs> and no prizes for guessing what for. Speedy. <gasps> well done. I was only doing 74. <laughs> In a 30-mile limit. Oh, I don't make the stupid regulations. <laughs> well, the chairman only needs another offence in the next two years and you could lose your licence altogether. Oh, is that so? <laughs> you tell her, old man. Oh, heaven knows we've been trying. Well, under the totting oh, up... for pity's sake. Do you always have to be such a bore? Oh, my love. I tell you, I've just about had enough of it. It wouldn't be so bad if she only treated me like that when we were alone, but to be humiliated in front of people like Jack and Olive. Um, it's quarter to seven. I'd rather tell you than have you trying to look at your watch over my shoulder. Hey, it's just a joke. Serves me right for going out with a married man. Well, I, I suppose I'll have to go see him. I won't let you go. Shall I make a scene? Do you want to? Often. Whenever you say her name or when I catch you glancing at your watch. Not to mention every time you have to leave me to go back to Vivian. I don't just mean like now. That's the worst, but for walking with you or in the pub. I'm waiting for it, but when you actually say it, I'll have to be going. I could scream. Every time. You never do. I thought you got enough of that at home. Go on. Yes, I will. Isn't it ridiculous? I actually got quite soppy the other day, washing and ironing that handkerchief you left behind. Would you marry me? <sighs> Not much point under the circumstances. If I were free? The answer would be no. It's not that I don't love you. It's just I'd be no good to you long term, and I can't even count on keeping my job for much longer. You won't want me with a white stick and a guide dog. I could keep you. And there must be some treatment, something somebody can do. No, not really. What's that supposed to mean? There is one man in Cambridge. What's his name? Coburn, Professor George Coburn. But it's an experimental unit outside the health service. They struggle along on a grant from some foundation, and apparently the only way they can make ends meet is by charging the patients. Expensive? Oh, I've been into it, and it's not even worth thinking about. How much? It could add up to thousands. Right. Right. I'll make an appointment for us to see him. The first thing to do is to find out whether he can help you. Then we'll worry about the money. It's about time I started taking some responsibility for you. How's Vivian gonna like that? Well, Vivian will just have to get used to it, won't she? I'm going home now. And I'm gonna tell her about you tonight. I wanted to get away from you. That time I went to America. 
I thought of divorcing you. I did love you at first. Never met anyone like you. All that dazzle and drive. They could have lit London by plugging you into the national grid. What a pity it all fizzled out. Yes. Yes, it is a pity. And nobody's fault. And now that I've told you about Anna... <clears throat> well, I don't see what's funny about it. No, you wouldn't. Well, what about all the men you've had? Is that funny, too? Oh, I see. It's all my fault, is it? That's not very gallant of you. Trying to make out that I drove you into the arms of this little freak. Anna is not a freak. Oh, no, just blind. That's She's all. going blind, yes, unless we can find somebody to do something about it. She's also a very special person. She must be to see anything in you. Vivian, be reasonable. I would be reasonable. If you wanted to have a fling with some real red-blooded woman... In fact, she would have my deepest sympathy. But this myopic little Miss Mouse, what does she do for a living? She's a bookseller. Warwick's? Never heard of them. All right, she's an assistant in a bookstore. Oh, honestly, Roland. Well, we don't all get a fat allowance from Daddy. No, some of us get our houses bought and our businesses financed by him, don't we? And are never allowed to forget it. What is the attraction? Surely you don't think that fun and games with a blind local shop girl is going to make you healthy, wealthy and wise. Since you ask, the attraction is that Anna has made me feel like a man again. Oh, oh, oh come on. Yes. Yes, it's true. And it's pretty damn amazing after five years of being emasculated by you and your family. All right. So what do you want me to do about it? I take it you have some purpose in inflicting this tedious little saga on me? I told you. I want a divorce. Oh. No way. Vivian. Mm -hmm. We don't even like each other. Right. And it's not as though there were any children to worry about. Right again. Then for heaven's sake, why can't we have a painless divorce? Because I won't agree. We'd both be much happier. In my case, it's arguable. I don't have anyone else. Momentarily. Much more to the point. When did you ever make me happy? Well, that's all the more reason for getting rid of me. Not if that's what you want. Why? I don't intend to be made to look a fool. Oh, if that's the problem, fine. I mean, I'm not proud. You leave me. Nobody's leaving anybody. Vivian, for heaven's sake. Make me look a fool. And I warn you, that tin pot firm of yours will be closed down in the time it takes me to make one phone call to Daddy. Unless, of course, you can raise the money to pay him back. You'd really do that? Try me. Nice idea, this. Oh, too noisy in the pub at lunchtime. This is better. You see him? Vivian's father lent me the capital to start up on my own, interest-free. Decent of him. <laughs> it wasn't exactly philanthropy. It was his idea of tying down his son-in-law and of getting a stake in the microchip revolution. But the fact of the matter is, if she as much as lifts a finger, he'll pull out. And if he does? You know, in the present economic climate, no one's going to lend me the money, which means curtains for a business which is just beginning. Anyway, that's irrelevant. The point is, she, she won't give me a divorce. Maybe she'll come round. I can't count on it. No. Well, that makes it practically impossible for me to tell you what I have to say. Darling, this is about your eyes. Don't worry, I've made an appointment for us with this specialist, Professor Cope. Darling, what's the matter? I've got us into an even worse mess. I'm going to have a baby. Are you sure? I thought it would be the last straw. After five years of being told how 
boring how useless I was in bed and out of it. I do love you. Here's to babies. Right. Mop up and come sit down. I think we can help you. It's only fair that I should warn you that the technique I'd like to use is still strictly in the experimental stage. So, Anna would be a guinea pig? Yes. There's no guarantee of success? None at all. It's not very encouraging. I don't want to mislead you. On the other hand, if nothing's done, there's no doubt that you'll lose your sight. And in a matter of months rather than years. Oh, I see. So, we take the chance or face that certainty? That's about it. There's also the question of money. I wish there was, but I'm afraid there is. Is there no possibility of getting it done on the health service? Not a hope in hell. It's difficult enough to get them to pay for orthodox treatment these days. Well, can we think about it, talk it over and come back to you? Yes, of course, I don't want to pressure you, but there is another time element to consider, and fact too. At the moment, by some miracle, the optic nerve isn't damaged. But it will be in a matter of weeks rather than months. Once it is, there'll be nothing anyone can do. There's also the question of your pregnancy. It's very early. It's not a problem at the moment, but we're talking about special treatment. I wouldn't be happy about undertaking it much above another month or so. Well, that doesn't give us long one way or the other. No. Tell you what. Why don't you let us do a few more tests while you're here? Don't worry. That's covered by the consultation fee. But if you do decide to go ahead, it means we'll have all the information we need to get ourselves sorted out so as to be able to call you in at very short notice. What do you think? Might as well know you're here. Okay. Good. Nurse, take Miss Warwick over to physiology, would you, and then bring her back to the waiting room. This way, madam. I'll meet you there. Well, um, what exactly is involved? Oh, it's a particularly complicated for... No, 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 sorry. I meant financially. Ah, well, I'm afraid it would be quite considerable. You want me to give you money to patch up your mistress? I asked you to lend it to me. What is your collateral? I'll give her up if you will lend me the money to pay for the treatment. Oh, I suppose you think you're being noble. I don't know about that, but I'll do it if it's the only way her sight can be saved. You say that now. Well, you just have to trust me. Oh, do you think that's a joke? So you won't help? Not on your life. As far as I'm concerned, Miss Mouse deserves whatever's coming to her, so don't get any ideas, you two. Whatever happens, <laughs> I'll always have the last laugh on you. <laughs> Anna, what have we got to drink? Um, vermouth, I think. That'll do. Anything. I nearly killed myself rushing to bring you the news. News? She agreed, so call that specialist. She agreed? Yes. So just ring Coburn and tell him that you are ready any time that he is. The money will be all right. <laughs> By the way, I shall be in Yarmouth next weekend. <gasps> is that a statement or an invitation? Annual conference of the Federation of Small Businesses. Oh. That's your thing. Does that mean you're taking Anna? And if I am? I might just put my foot down. Why? I've told you. I don't intend to be made to look a fool. And that includes getting knowing glances from your colleagues well, at the next worry. get together. As it happens, Anna is standing by to go into hospital.
kept you so long in the garage? Usual checks. Oil, water, tyres, battery. You're so careful, it's a wonder you get anywhere. Are you sure Miss Mouse isn't going with you? Positive. You've got enough luggage to go halfway around the world. Mm. Well, goodbye, Vivian. I'll be seeing you. calling me at this hour of the morning. I am calling to say goodbye. As a matter of fact, I'm at London Airport now with Anna. Our flight to Paris leaves in just under the hour. Do you know if you really hurried, you'd be just in time to wave. Goodbye, Vivian. local station asked us to contact you, sir. It's bad news, I'm afraid. Your wife's been in a crash. My wife? Is she? I understand it's serious, but she's in intensive care, so there's still a chance. Oh, my God. I blame you for this. You gave her the damn thing. She must have taken that turn a million times. Always too fast. She was a lovely driver. She had two convictions for speeding already. If you hadn't made her so miserable, she'd never have misjudged it today. I shall always think that you killed her. I don't think this is a very helpful conversation. Thank your lucky stars, you have an alibi. Who gave permission for the life support systems to be turned off? Since you weren't there, I did. She had irreversible brain damage. I suppose you'd have condemned our daughter to a, to a life as a vegetable. No, I'd have done the same. It'd be the first decent thing you'd ever done for her. We know all about you and your little flippity gibbet. Do you know about all the men she took to bed? Shame on you. Trust you to speak ill of the dead. If I'd had my way, she'd have changed her will instead of leaving this house to you. Well, since she didn't, I'd be very glad if you'd get out of it. Oh, you can Don't speak to Don't yourself, like my dear. In the circumstances, you won't object if we take the body back to Yorkshire for the funeral. Frankly, I don't care what you do. Who's that? It's all right, it's all right, it's me, it's right. All right. You can kiss me if you can find my mouth.
free. Free? There was an accident. Vivian was killed. Accident? Yes, I... I can't pretend I'm sorry. It means... We don't have to worry anymore. We can be married. A quiet register office wedding by the end of the month, unless you want the full production number. Oh, no. No, just to be married. Sorry about Vivian. I'm not dreaming, am I? No, no. How are you? What do the doctors say? Oh, I don't talk about it. I don't even think about it. They won't know if it's worked until the bandages come off. When's that? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday morning. So, that's it. And very nice, too. The ideal small estate. What's it worth? Are you in a hurry to sell? Not particularly why. Could make all the difference. We should be able to get you 100,000 for it tomorrow. It's worked. I knew it would. Don't be so smug. I told you everything would work. You don't seem to understand. I've made medical history. The first successful eye transplant. What's incredible. They won't tell me the name of the donor because it's against medical etiquette, apparently, but she was brought in with irreversible brain damage. She was killed in a car crash on Saturday. The husband was out of town, so her parents gave me permission to have her eyes. I'm so lucky. Look. Aren't they beautiful? 